Hey everyone, welcome to Two Car Pros. My name is Ryan and today we're doing something really, really exciting. We are putting cylinder heads on my Chevrolet Big Block. This is how to build a Chevrolet Big Block, part 10 of our series, again, with cylinder heads. So this is a little bit of a longer one and every step is kind of really important, so it's important to uh, pay attention. Uh, especially to uh, how we are tightening things in what specific orders and how tight and I also wanted to say that uh, both sides are exactly the same so I'm only going to show doing one side and then that just applies to the other as well and I'm really excited that our engine is finally looking well like an engine instead of just a regular block so uh, this is a really exciting episode for me. I'm super excited to get started, so let's get into it. So before we go anywhere uh, today with installing the heads, I wanted to point out that I am using an aftermarket head. This is an Edelbrock Performance RPM head. It is part number 60459. I also wanted to mention these are pretty much complete. They have the valves already installed with the springs, so you don't really have to worry about uh, valve stem clearance or anything crazy like that, but there's two tests we want to do. Even if you have a stock head that you had rebuilt, like a cast iron head that was sent to a machine shop and rebuilt and you got it back looking like this but it's um, cast iron instead of aluminum um, or if you buy an aftermarket Edelbrock head or any brand doesn't matter any cylinder head we have to measure the flatness of this surface and how well the valves are sealing. Okay, so what I've done here is uh, position some wood in a way that it's on my nice rolly cart so it's on a nice flat surface. It's as flat as I can get it. It doesn't have to be down to the micron, but you know, flat enough. And what we're gonna do is take a straight edge and go up and down the head surface here. So we'll set that there. I'm gonna have a helper hold that up for me. And then we're gonna take a feeler gauge at uh, 200 thousandths of an inch. So it's super thin. And we're just gonna try to slip it in between surfaces here. And we can see that that is not going in. That's not going in. That's not going in. That's not going in. The way over here. So you can check that. It's really important in between the combustion chambers up here, but we can go ahead and move it down a little bit and just do it in like three different places and just check all along the line here to make sure there's no glaring gaps because if there's big gaps or something like say you had uh, a cast iron head and it was used um, that has to be remachined to be perfectly flat because if it's not totally flat you will blow a head gasket and this looks pretty flat so we can go ahead and move on to checking our uh, valve ceiling. Alright so I've zoomed into one of the combustion chambers here and you'll notice that I've installed our spark plug uh, and torqued that down to 10 foot pounds which is what it says on the paper which is good and what we're going to be doing is filming filling the combustion chamber up with uh, water. You can also use gasoline if you really want to but I don't like working with gasoline. It's really volatile, it smells, gives you a headache, it's dangerous on top of it and water works just fine. And I want to mention that the plugs we're using today are an AC Delco R42XLS. And uh, we actually found these at our local auto parts store, so they're not super rare or anything, which is super, super cool. So what we're going to do is fill this with water, and then we're going to uh, blow both sides of the intake and the exhaust ports with compressed air. Uh, to see if we can see any bubbles, but before we do that, we're going to check with a flashlight down in there to make sure no water is seeping down into the valves, because if that's the case, uh, the valve job, the valve seal job is no good. So we can go ahead and uh, grab our Del Taco cup, not sponsored, but I'd like to be, and just pour that in. I want to make sure the head is as flat as humanly possible as well. Fill that up nice and full, and then we're going to wait a minute or two and we're going to check the exhaust side uh, valve and the intake side valve. So where you're looking is the intake side of that combustion chamber that I showed earlier. We're going to go flashlight and flash it down in there. And you just want to look around at the seal or even down on the stem, anywhere in there. If there's any kind of water, uh, especially on the intake side, it's like really, really bad and you have to do uh, reseal the valves. But this looks bone dry and it's been a few minutes. So now we're on the exhaust side of that same combustion chamber. We can flash our flashlight down in there and uh, check it out, make sure that's nice and dry. Now the exhaust side can leak a teeny bit. You know, make sure it's not gushing water or nothing, but if it leaks a small amount, it's not that big a deal. The intake side is really the, uh, the linchpin of the operation, but this looks uh, bone dry as well. And we can do that for all four combustion chambers. So what I'm gonna do next is take some compressed air here and blow it into our exhaust side port. 
and see if there's any bubbles, because if there's any bubbles coming out at this point, we're gonna have to reseal the valves. That looks pretty sealed to me. All right, now we can try the intake side. See that there is no bubbles. And now we just do this for the rest of the combustion chambers on both heads, and we can move on. Uh, we tested all four of our combustion chambers. Now we can blow it off with some compressed air. Make sure that make sure that's as dry as uh, we can get it. And then we're gonna take some WD-40 and just give it a nice film. There we go. All right, we're almost at the exciting part. Now, the next thing I wanna talk about is your head gasket. We have these pretty nice, heavy-duty Felpro uh, head gaskets here that actually have uh, what you'd think is like a copper coating sprayed on. Some people like spraying all the surfaces with copper coating. That's your personal preference. They did that back in the day, but modern head gaskets are so incredible. Uh, we can just put them on like this, making sure that this surface is facing up and it has that coating pre-built in. We can go ahead and place that on, make sure all our holes line up and nothing is uh, covered or misfitting and these fit perfectly. Before we go any further, I wanna mention that I've cleaned the deck surface off complete with carburetor spray and some paper towels and then uh, blew some compressed air. So it's very, very clean surface. So before we uh, heave ho our cylinder head on here, I wanna mention that I actually have the engine tilted so the deck surface is parallel with the ground. Uh, if you were doing this on, on a normal uh, application where you couldn't really turn the engine, uh, the dowels here are actually hold the head on, but we're doing it this way to be extra safe to make sure our really expensive head doesn't just fall off. And then uh, I also want to mention that the cylinder head has been thoroughly cleaned just like the deck surface, so there's no debris in between the two. Luckily this is aluminum and it's uh, quite a bit lighter than the cast iron stuff. It's about half as heavy. So we can go ahead and lower that on there. So there's the other, and that is seated quite nicely. So before we go any further, I want to mention that these Edelbrock heads, because they're aluminum, come with these special bolts, only four of them though, and they are 4.44 inches long, and they go in the tall sections here, but not this one on the far of my left, your right. And then I also want to mention that I'm going to be putting some silicone rubber on all the threads for all the head bolts because some engines are a little different uh, from an engine to engine, but it's a good practice to get into because sometimes, and a lot of them are on this big block itself, uh, actually if the threads go straight into a water jacket, which will leak coolant back into your engine, which is just never good. So we're going to cover our bases and cover all of our uh, threads on our head bolts with a little bit of silicone rubber. So we have our four different types of bolts here. I want to go over first. Uh, these actually came with our head. I might have mentioned them earlier, uh, but they're a 12 point and I bought this kit and it comes with a six point. They do come in 12. I prefer six. I'm old school that way and I'm going to continue doing that. And the ARP ones are going to be, uh, have higher PSI rating anyway. The Edelbrock ones I think are at 170,000 where these are 180,000. So they're technically better. I want them all to match and look good too. Who doesn't want that? So we have our four different sizes. We have our really short ones at 1.38 inches, our medium short ones at uh, 2.88, our medium ones at uh, 3.38, and our long, long ones at 4.44. And it's important where they all go in accordance to the chart we got from Edelbrock. So it's important to have them nice and ready. And the uh, washers are on correctly with the chamfer side facing up. And the bottom side has been lubricated with this fastener assembly lube that came with our stuff. And then we're going to put some silicone rubber on the threads before every single installation. So I want to mention that now so I don't have to keep mentioning it as we put bolts in. So we're going to start uh, by putting some bolts in here. And you always want to work from the middle of the head outward. And it's not crazy how they're torqued down right this moment because we're not going torquing to spec just yet. We're just putting them in and snugging them up a teensy bit. But what we want to do is take some uh, thread sealer, silicone rubber, put on our thread or our finger here and wipe that around just like that. That looks perfect. And I'm not going to mention this every time. Just know that I am doing it every time. I think I'm going to go ahead and take our long bolts bolt and install that and grab uh, a, this little teeny tiny drill. It's on a very low clutch. It's just to give it a little snug. There we go. And now we can uh, just keep going from the middle outward.
So the next thing I'm gonna bring up is your torque wrench. This is actually really important and it definitely needs a torque wrench and a torque spec. Uh, and the, they differ uh, from the long bolts to the short ones. But we're not gonna worry about that right now. What we're gonna do is set our torque wrench to 20 foot pounds and we're gonna follow the pattern on this sheet that I have on screen now. And uh, we're just gonna set that to 20 and then just go on the pattern as it says so on the sheet. And we're gonna do these in three stages. So we're gonna go like 20 and then 40 and then 60 and then you know, whatever the final number is. You can even do four, but it says three on the instructions. So number one is that one right there. There we go. Number two is this one. Number three is this one. And how you tighten it absolutely matters. If you mess up this step, you're gonna have to do the entire uh, job over again And you have a chance of blowing a head gasket if you do it incorrectly. So following the instructions big deal Number six is this one here Number seven is uh, This one yes. And then eight is this one All right, that's our first round of torquing uh, at 20. We're gonna go up to 40 and then 60. And then once I'm done with that, I'll come turn the camera back on and we can do our final torque down. But no, I am going in steps. So I've done two tightening stages of 20 and then 40. And now we're actually gonna move on to uh, 65 for these bottom four. These are actually the ones that are supposed to be a little bit looser. And then the, all the rest of them are 75. And the way I'm gonna accomplish that is I'm gonna go through the patterns. But once I get to one of these, like on the fourth bolt, I'm going to swap to my other torque wrench. Or you, if you don't have two, you could just lower it to 65 for these and the rest are 75. That's really, really important. So here's my 75 foot pound torque wrench. And we're gonna start on number one here. There we go, 75, and then number two. Number two is right here, we showed earlier. There we go, and then number three is up here. Number four, now we've gotten to number four, we switch torque wrenches to the 65 foot-pound one. There we go. And number five is next door. Again, we're using our 65 foot pounder. Perfect. And then number six is over here that we swap back to our 75 foot pounds here. And number seven is here. Number eight is adjacent from that. Then number nine is this one over here. Number 10 is one of the down low ones. So we swap torque wrenches. There we go. And then number 11 is actually our last uh, 65 foot pounder. So we can just swap to our 75 for the rest of our install here. So yeah, number 11, number 12 is up here. Perfect. Number 13 is way over here on the right. Number 14 is uh, adjacent from that. Perfect. And then number 15 is this far left one. 
And then number 16 is just up from there. And there we go. Thank you so much for watching. Uh, if you have any questions, please leave them down below. All applicable links are located down below in the description. Uh, you guys have been great. If you haven't subscribed, make sure you do. I try to roll these big block videos out every two weeks. So next week is a regular uh, maintenance car video. And the week after that, we will be doing valve train, which again is a very important step. So it's some really excited things. We're just that much closer to hearing this thing run. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time.